Are you looking for a native test solution that's faster and more efficient than Jest? Then this video is for you. In this step-by-step -step guide, you learn how to migrate from Jest to Node.js native test runner. You walk through the process from setting up your environment to running your tests and now prove that Node.js test runner is faster and more reliable than Jest. By the end of this video, you have the knowledge and confidence to take advantage of the full power of Node.js test runner and simplify your testing workflow. So let's dive in and take your testing game to the next level. Are you ready? Get a drink and let's begin. <clears throat> Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave your thumbs up. This helps a lot with the work I've been doing here. Thanks for choosing watching my video and let's do this. Jazz has become big in the JavaScript ecosystem. It solves a lot of problems for front-end and back-end applications. It contains all the tool sets needed for testing JavaScript applications. And as far as I know, it's part of the standard in React applications. Well, Node.js is evolving fast and a native solution for testing has been added. In Node.js v20, the native test runner was promoted to the stable stage. However, this doesn't mean the test runner has everything that Jest has, and a lot of features are still in progress. I'm a Node.js core team developer, and I've been working on improving the mocking and test runner in general. Something that I missed in the native test runner is fake timers. The fake timers feature helps us to stub functions such as set timeout, set to interval, and others. Imagine your function has a set timeout function that must wait for 20 seconds to execute a callback. This will make the test suite slow, and remember, unit tests must not rely on the environment it's being executed. This means timers are part of the operating system and could have different behaviors depending on the JavaScript code is being executed. In summary, the fake timers feature helps us to trigger timers without having to wait for them. I've started this draft pull request implementing the first experimental version, and you can check it out at the link in the video description. For this video, I've prepared a demo in that I'll first do all examples using Jest and then I'll migrate all examples to the Node.js test runner. My goal here is not to say that one approach is better than other, but to show you how can you migrate from Jest to Node.js and what's the difference between one and another. Well, I'll be using the Node.js in the version 20 to experiment with all the new features and I'll assume that you have previous experience work with libraries such as Jest. Enough talking, right? Let's check this out in practice. As I told you, I'm gonna use Node.js 20 to do everything, okay? To get started, I'm gonna create two folders, Jest and Node.js to compare both approaches, okay? Let's uh, go inside Jest, initialize a Node.js project, okay? And I'm gonna be installing Jest as well. Nice. I'm gonna put on our package JSON type module, so we'll be working with ECMAScript modules, and then let's execute Jest init to initialize all the configurations from Jest. So I would like the testing script on my package JSON. I'm gonna I'm I won't be using TypeScript. I'm gonna use Node. I want coverage, not this time. V8 and I'm gonna not clear all the mocks after. Okay. So see it's a MJS file. I'm gonna create now a testing folder. I'm gonna start talking about spice. So spice test.js. Okay. So first of all, I'm gonna import all modules from JS globals. Okay. So I'm gonna start with describe and eat. I'm gonna say, let's put something here just to check if the structure it's all set. Okay, I'm gonna save it, and on the package JSON, I'm gonna do some uh, uh, changes here. I'm gonna create test dev, so Jest can use the watch mode, and let's run it. Okay, we could see that Jest is saying 
that we need some additional configuration to be able to execute ECMAScript modules, okay? So let's change our code. So it's node options, experimental VM modules, okay? And I'm gonna keep NPX just to make sure that I'll be using JS from my package JSON from my node modules and not some global uh, environment, okay? I'm gonna save it and let's try running again. Let's check. So now everything is passing. This is how your code should like. Okay, nice. So I'm gonna call this one spice test switch and should verify calls in a mock. Okay, nice. So for you who's not familiar with the spies and stubs function, I have a, a live stream here, I have some videos also, but don't worry, we're gonna start from scratch, okay? Well, I'm gonna create a function now, and I'm gonna count how many times those functions were called, and then I'm gonna check uh, which arguments were called on the same function, okay? So I'm gonna create a run function. It's gonna receive a function that's gonna be executed and how many times it's gonna be executed. I'm gonna do something very straightforward for this example, okay? So less than equal times i++, plus plus, okay? And then I'm gonna just say that my current function will be i times five, okay? Just it, just it for now. So first of all, we're gonna use the jest mock. So I'm gonna import jest in here. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it spy. I think it's better, jest.fn. And then we can call our run function, okay? So it's gonna receive a function that's gonna be executed, which is our spy. And I'm gonna say that this function is gonna be executed only two times. If I save it here, you're gonna see that the test is passing because we are not verifying anything here, okay? To verify items on JS, we usually use uh, ex expect to search our, uh, our mockings. So I will expect this spy function to have been called, okay? But I'll, I'm gonna use any T8. So I'm gonna say on the first call, it's gonna be called with the current zero. Okay, because I starts from zero. So if I save here, you're gonna see the test is passing. If I move from one, you're gonna see everything stop working, okay? Nice, I'm gonna do for all the others. So on the second, it's gonna be five, because five uh, uh, times one, it's five, and five times two is 10. So I'm gonna save it, and now all the tests should pass. Really straightforward, isn't it? All right, let's move on. This is just the first example. Let's create more one for stubs. Want test .js. Okay, I'm gonna copy all the structure and paste it here, and just save, so you're gonna see it's already being loaded by Jest, okay? But now I wanna do something different. I wanna request an API and try making this offline so all unit tests won't rely on the environment, okay? So I'm gonna call, let's create a class just so we have some instance to work on because this is how we usually work on a daily basis work, okay? Well. I'm gonna create async static get talks and I'm gonna be able to paginate this data. So skip and limit, okay? To make this work, we can go to my website and you can see all my talks there. But something that you might not know, it's everything here is a, a GraphQL, okay? So if I take a look here on the GraphQL, I can see all the operations here how this was uh, being returned and everything else. So we're gonna try consuming this so you can interact with this API, okay? Looking here, you can see all the, the endpoint, right? So I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna change just the route. So I'm gonna put it here and it's gonna be GraphQL, okay? You add an I, 
Nothing working here, but if you click on the docs, you could see some queries and we know what kind of methods we can call. So let's go on the get talks and we can see all the fields here, okay? If you take a look, we have all the IntelliSense here. So I'm gonna use query. I'm gonna use get talks and I'm gonna just run the total count. Let me put some more zoom here so you can see it. If I press control enter or command enter, I can see all the results. So there's some extensions from the GraphQL API, but here is the data that we want, okay? I've given 115 talks, oh my God, it's been a lot. I can go further, I can get the talks and I can get all the titles. So we can see all the talks here. I think it's paginating. Okay, I don't, uh, I, I think I return only 10 items per time just to avoid some problem. If we go here, we can skip and we can limit this data. So I'm gonna limit, let's say by two. If I run, you can see only two titles. So I'm gonna grab title and ID. So this is all the data we want from our query, okay? Uh, if you want to go further, you can go on videos and posts and do exactly the same thing. So on the videos, I can check how many videos we have. So it's 162. Oh boy, it's a lot. We can see uh, actually the title of those videos and so on. Okay. Nice. Amazing, isn't it? Perfect. But you can remove videos for now and we're going to use only this query to make our request. So you can copy and paste on our application, okay? I'm gonna go back here. To make a request there, we're gonna use fetch, okay? Which is native in the Node.js core. I'm gonna put the URL later, but first we should say we're gonna use post method and the headers is gonna be content type application json so we we're gonna make it parse to json so we can start using it right away and in the body we're gonna use json string file and it's gonna be query and we send all that string okay but see there is a query here so we can remove it this object and that's it for now okay to get the URL, we can go back to the browser and get the same URL here, okay? If you, you didn't copy the URL, just copy now from the video, okay? So the URL, it's going to be GraphQL. It's not I, you see? The I is for the whole interface. Just a thing here. I have some security protection there. If you trigger a bunch of requests at the same time on this API, it's gonna block you for some time, okay? Just to avoid uh, uh, the DOS problems. So I'm gonna get items from this fetch, just put an await there. It seems all set from this side. Let's see where this finishes. And we can put just a console.log on the items here. We can remove the run function and let's just call this function, get actually service, get talks. Okay, so we skip, I'm gonna ignore zero items and I'm gonna limit by 10. Just remember to put an async here and I'm gonna save it. So here we have all the data, okay? But fetch actually returns some more interesting items. So result, it's gonna be await items JSON. So now we trigger only the result. Now you can see that we have an object data, okay? So I would wrap it and put data. If I save it now, we can see the get talks and then talks, right? It's the same structure here. I'm gonna save it and let's check this out. All right, so we have two talks, just an ID and description as we wanted to, okay? 
Nice, very nice. First of all, I'm gonna keep this object, like I'm gonna call mock object, just for now. And let's just copy one of this and paste it here, okay? This is how we usually do in production. We want to use Jest to avoid this function going to the internet, so we can actually test our functions. Just a thing, we are not using skip and limit here, right? So let's put it here, skip and limit. So I'm gonna save and now we're gonna see more items. Okay, now we have 10 items there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, I'm gonna imagine this would be another completely different file, okay? So I'm gonna use a function to map the response. Let's imagine it's another different layer and that's it. So I'm gonna grab the data and I'm gonna grab from this data just a few items. So I'm gonna interact with it. I'm gonna grab the ID and title, okay? And then I'm gonna return a string. So ID is ID, title is the title. And then I'm gonna join them all because map returns an array in a single string separated by break lines. So now, I don't know if I remove the console log. No, we can return the result now. Actually, we can return it right away. And then we can use our map response, okay? And we can just console.log just to see the results. So now our mapping function is all right, okay? But it's still, it's going to the internet to make everything working. All right, I'm gonna create, just to make things more interesting, I'm gonna create a function called run and it's gonna have the skip and limit by default. Skip it is skip is zero and the limit is 10, okay? And then I'm gonna make all this call here. So I can remove the console.log. I can say that skip and limit is gonna go from our function. And I'm gonna say talks and then return Talks. I could have done in the same line, right? But just make this right. Async here because we are using await. All right. And then we can do the same thing. Just console.log on the run. And I won't pass any parameters because the fall is 0 and 10. So I'm going to save again. Oops. Skip 0. Oh, because it must be an object by default. So see, promise pending, let's forget it. I forget it, the await. Now that's all there being met from that function, okay? Nice, now we're gonna mock this object to avoid our function going to the internet all the time, just to check if our map response is mapping the results as we expect. So let's change here, step test suite. The it here, we're gonna say should stub APIs because I'm not so <laughs> creative to create names. So what I would like to do here, we're gonna use jest and the function spy on. So spy on also does the stub. Stub is just to remove the original function, remove the, the original behavior to go on internet, to read files and so on to make something as we expect. So I'm going to use the service and then we have to pass a function name. We could have used here just uh, uh, get talks, right? But I like more using get talks dot name, which is going to return the get talks here. But if we we change here, like, I don't know, ISD, you can see that the function has changed all the way that the name was declared, right? So this is, for me, it's better than just some magic string. Okay, once someone, some module call this function, 
I'm gonna mock the resolved value, okay? We could use the result value or just mock value, okay? Resolved value is to return a promise. I'm gonna return a array and I'm gonna put this single object there, okay? So now I'm saying every time that you want to call the get talks, you won't go on the API. You're gonna return and use this function because the only thing we want to do in here is to check if our map is mapping or doing some calculations rightly, okay? Now, we're gonna use the same run we had here. Gonna use const result. It's gonna be our run. And I could limit as one, okay? Because on our mock, we are just returning one. So it's just to make sure it will work as expected, okay? Nice, something I would say better to do here is to grab the index, just to have a, a beauty log. Oops, and here it's gonna be index, okay? So all the time we are reading data, it's gonna print out which is the position from zero to 10, because we can see the limit and check if the results are coming as we expect, okay? Nice, limit one, and what we expect? Well, we expect, let's see here, it's gonna be zero, space, ID, this ID, okay, and then title, right? Title, space, and we paste all this title. Nice. Now I can validate all this data. Just let's check this out really quickly, what the result is returning. So now you can see is returning the journey, -na 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 -na, right? But if I comment this line, you're gonna see the result is different. So the result now is going to the API and return a different result. I did this on purpose so you can get to know. So if I put here 50, it's gonna go to the web API and return all 50 items, right? 49 because it starts from zero. Nice, so it's working as we expect. And now we just make some assertions. So first of all, we could expect our service to get talks to have, have been called times and just one. Okay, I'm gonna expect it was called just once. I think it's not expect, is expect, I think I typed, uh, oh, ex expected here, right? And expect here. Save it and let's see. Now the test is passing, okay, it was called just once. If I run this twice, you're gonna see that our code is not passing. So if you have any uh, uh, rules or any wrong code here is gonna call more than one time and we're gonna check it's going wrongly, okay? Perfect, we are almost there. I'm gonna remove this because I just run the result. What else? Well, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but I'm gonna say it's gonna be called with. So I want to see if it was called with the proper results. So I'm using limit one, so the skip by default is one and limit we are passing there is one, okay? If I save it, this test must pass. So it's still passing, all right. If I put here 10, you're gonna see that the test is gonna break, okay? Okay, now we are doing all the spies again, okay? The, the step part is just this one. So we are avoiding going on the internet. And now I can use the expect, the result, to equal our expected. The test is passing, all we need for now. Okay, let's do a last example using this and then we start migrating to Node.js, okay? So I'm gonna copy and paste this function. And now for each individual call, I'm gonna return a different value. So we use this a lot when mocking applications that goes to the internet. So here is expected, save it, and here the same, save it, okay? 
Nice. So let's see if it's everything is working fine. So if we go there, we will notice a problem here. You cannot mock an object because it's already mocked. So what we do here is before all functions. So let's import before. Before each. Okay. So before each, we're going to reset jest. So I'm going to use restore all mocks to clean up to the original state. So if I save now, you're going to see everything is working fine as expected. All right. So now it should stub different values for call, for API calls. Now I'm going to do something more interesting. Now I'm going to say the mock result value once. So the first time he's going to return this value. Then I'm going to say the ID is going to be zero one. Mock is going to be one. And in the third call, it's going to be zero two mock zero two. OK, there are a lot of scenarios that we usually do this in production. And this you can do also with the native Node.js test runner. I'm showing just because of it. OK. All right, so I'm going to put it on a different context using this symbol so we can reuse uh, uh, the, the variable names here, okay? I'm going to just uh, uh, comment this for now. So the first result is exactly the same, right? So I'm going to copy and paste here. If I save it, let's see, it's working fine. Nice. Well, for the second call, we will have ID one and mock one, right? So one and mock zero one. If I save it, it's passing right away. Okay, nice. So you got the, the logic. It's going to be the same for the fourth. So if I put two here, both of them must be two. Okay, two. All set. Okay, now we're gonna do all the magic using Jazz here. So I expect this to be called three times, right? Because it's one, two, and three. So I'm gonna save. This test should be passing. Nice. What else? Well, now I'm gonna check if the functions were called as we expected with the right parameters. So to have been in called with. So in the first time, it's going to be called with skip zero. Oh, yeah, we could do something better here. So in the first one, the skip is going to be zero. The second is skip the first one and limit to one. And the third, it's going to be exactly the same, but changing the skip. OK, so limit, it's going to be one. The second call, it's going to be skip one, limit one. Let's see if the test is still passing. It's all passing. Well, and in the third, we're going to have two. Nice. So everything is working fine. This is something very complex that we usually do in production in our uh, uh, code environment. Oh, I think this, this camera is removing a bit of code for you. Let's see if you can see it better now. Perfect. So now let's take the last example and then we start migrating to Node.js. OK, so I'm going to say third. It's going to be fake timers. So I told you Node.js doesn't have fake timers yet because I'm working on it. But let's just see how it works in practice. So you're going to uh, uh, clean your mind. OK, so I'm going to remove all the set. So imagine a thing. I'm going to use set timeout. OK, and I'm going to grab here a spy function from Jess FN. And I'm going to say it's going to call our spy function after nine seconds. Imagine we had a lot of functions calling this. If I keep this code here, you're going to see that Jess is saying something's wrong. Something is taking too long to finish something. But I'm going to do a console.log here just to say I was called. Let's see. 
So it didn't print a thing because our set timeout is taking too long, right? But I could put here two seconds. Let's see. It's because I have nothing to pause this. Let's see in our workaround here. I'm gonna put async and let's see if it's, it's gonna print out. No. Okay, something that we can do here is actually get the dome and call it right here, just to say that it has finished. Now I was called, right? So if I put here nine seconds, you're gonna see that Jess is gonna wait all along for nine seconds to run our code. And this just reached the whole amount of seconds, the maximum amount of seconds. So this is a very bad practice, okay? What we usually do, we mock, we use fake timers, so we don't need to wait for the set timeout. So I'm gonna remove this down from here gonna let as it was and now I'm gonna first of all just use fake timers okay and now I'm gonna advance in time so I'm gonna advance nine seconds and now you're gonna notice that our spy function should be called okay have been called now if I save this code you're gonna see our console.log is being executed, but see how long it took, less than a second, okay? Nice, so this is the only thing we don't have, or uh, so far, we don't have in the Node.js that is being implemented. Okay, let's just remove this run from here. And now we're gonna do the migration from all those functions to the Node.js. Just a quick break now. I've released my first ebook and it's the first content on the internet showing you how to understand what's the behind the scenes of the Node.js core. There, you make your own Node.js runtime version from scratch and I will show you the relationship between Chrome V8 engine, LibUV and the C++ bridge. This will help you understand and troubleshoot current problems that your Node applications might have such as bottlenecks, performance, and much more. Check the video description for the page. Also, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and check out my website where I gather all the training courses I've launched. There is a lot of information that can help you, and of course, many free content for you. Nice, so let's go back. Now I'm gonna go to the Node.js folder. I'm gonna initialize a Node.js project, okay? And there, let's just move this a bit. And here, to use the Node.js test, I'm gonna use node-test-test on the test folder, okay? So I'm gonna create a folder here, just to name test. Don't forget to add the type module. And I'm gonna do the same thing I was doing for Jest. I'm gonna use the test watch, and we can use the watch mode in JavaScript, in Node.js, native, without installing anything. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, uh, run npm. I think the code is right here, right? Test dev, uh, da, da, da. Uh, oops, test dev. All right, it just executed because it didn't found any code, right? So I'm gonna copy the spies one which is using Jest, okay? So let's change this code to be able to use Node.js. First of all, instead of Jest, we're gonna use Node.test, okay? So Node.test has Scribe, has it, doesn't have Jest, and doesn't have Expect, okay? To do those assertions, we're gonna use assert node assert. Perfect, the implementation we won't change, and we're gonna change all the code here. So we have mock, so it will act exactly as Jess was doing, mock.fm, okay? Nice, so expect doesn't exist. So now I'm gonna get all the calls from the mock. Actually, we can use assert strict equal to check how many calls it has been executed, so mock call count okay 
So I expected this to be executed two times, right? Three times because it starts from zero. <laughs> There's an error there, but that's fine. So now I can run the npm test dev, and now you can see the output. It's very different from Jest, right? It's more clean, and I think it's... I like it. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep doing. Okay, we have three counts there. Uh, just a thing, right? Let's see if just less, and if it's... Because we, we wanted two times only, right? So it's just two times, just so so we know that it's everything as we expected. npm t or npm test, everything is passing now. Okay, so in the Node.js side now, I'm gonna exit this one. I want just two calls, so in the Node.js it's gonna be two calls only. So here it's just less. Okay. As I'm saving, it's restarting all the code. If I change here, you're gonna see the test won't pass, okay? We can see a very different output as well. So count count is just two, but what if we want to get specific values? Well, I would say just is better with these namings uh, because we're gonna, we're gonna use a lot of arrays to get our objects. So calls, it's gonna be spy mock calls. Okay, so it's an array containing all the calls. So if I go to the zero and then I can get the context, which is the result and arguments. Okay, so I'm going to keep that way and let's change them all. So first it's going to be assert dip strict equal for all of them. So I'm going to say that I'm going to use both of them and all this part I'm gonna remove, okay? So instead of spy, here is the first call. So calls zero, okay? And then I'm gonna grab the arguments, okay? And I'm gonna grab the first argument, okay? Which will be our current zero. And it's gonna be the same thing for both operations. So it's five. As we, we said, it's just two iterations, is 0 and 5. I'm going to save it. Mm, something went wrong. What is it? Current 0, we expected 0, and current it's being 5. Why? Because we are using the same call. So first call. This is why I told you that I don't like much how it's designed, because we are handling arrays by hand. But is on the plan to add more helpers to make it, you do it easier, okay? I save it, now everything is passing. Now we just converted the first part of our code, okay? Let's try doing to the same thing to the steps. So I'm gonna paste the second one. I'm gonna copy from the spice we are using with node. So here I'm gonna just copy and paste it, okay? All right, from the implementation, we won't change anything. We're gonna, we just want to change our code. So first we see here our before each. So Node.js has its before each function, okay? Uh, it's gonna use just restore all mocks. For Node.js, it's gonna be mock.restore all. Nice. Well, what if we want to stub our function here? I'm gonna do uh, only here. Actually, I'm gonna keep this one and I'm gonna just skip the other one. I'm gonna save it. I'm not sure if it's reading. Let's see, because I just added some function. Jess is not defined in which line in the first one. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay. So to do the same thing, we're gonna use mock method and works exactly the same thing as Jess is doing, okay? However, the API, as I told you, is a bit different. So I'm gonna use mock.mock mock 
implementation, okay? So the mock implementation doesn't have like a helper like Jess has. So we're gonna pass a function and, and say what's gonna return. So I'm gonna say it's an async function, so I'll make sure it's gonna return a promise, and I'm gonna just copy and paste it right here. So I'm gonna remove it. Nice, for the mocking side, it's all right. What else? Now we have to change all this, uh, uh, these assertions, right? So first of all, I'm gonna use for both of them, assert deep strict equal. I'm gonna, okay, here. Okay, I'll, I'll just comment it and make from scratch. I think it's gonna be easier to show it. Assert deep strict equal. Well, we've done this, right, to get the count count. So mock count count. So I expect it to be called just once, okay? I'm gonna save it and let's check it out. Nice, the second test, which is should stub APIs is passing, right? Or not, Jess is not defined. Uh, I'm not sure if I did something wrong, let's see. No, no, it's not everything passing. It's because this is the stub, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. And here we have an skip. I don't know why it's passing, but it's skipped. Maybe some, some bug there. All right, let's do the same thing. So we have the call times once. Now you know how to get the arguments, right? Calls, it's gonna be service get talks mock dot calls nice so i'm gonna i'm gonna rem no yeah, yeah i'm gonna keep this and i'm gonna say in the first call the arguments in the first position should be this one right i'm gonna remove it and save it everything is still passing if i change here to two you're gonna see the test stop working. Oops. And if I keep as one, it's everything passing. Nice. Now it's just the last one. So I'm gonna use assert strict equal. Strict equal we use for uh, uh, primitive values, right? Strings and numbers. So it's gonna be the result expected. Save it and let's see. Everything was work fine. Nice. If I press plus one here, you're gonna see that all the errors, you're gonna see how is the output. Just to check if it's everything working. Okay, you've done for stubbing, and now we're gonna do the most complex one, right? We're gonna try mocking different values for each individual call. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing we've done here, okay? mock method and I'll paste it here. However, there's some tricky here. So I'm gonna say M, okay, to keep this mock working. And then we're gonna have an M for each of one because it doesn't return its instance. And we have to pass an additional value. So we're gonna say on the first call, okay, the first call is gonna return this function. The second call, it's gonna return this value. And the third, it's gonna return this value. And the fourth, it's gonna return that value, okay? I don't know why we have four. Uh, oh, because it's duplicate here, okay? It's just three. So zero, one, and three. Okay, the implementation keeps the same. Uh, expect we don't have any more, right? So here, we can do something more straightforward. Assert. Here, it's going to be strict equal. And here, I can just pre put a comma. All right. So if I just save as it is, we should see... Uh, mock result value once. Oh, it's not result value once. It's mock implementation once. So here it's once, once, and mock implementation once. You see the API is a bit different. 
Just save it. Uh, da, 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 receive an array. Yes, the same thing we've done before. We have to use a function, right? So I'm gonna copy this for both of them. I'm gonna save it and the assertion failed because is zero one. What happened? Here, strict equal, the result is different than the expected. Uh, oh, maybe it's because it's two now, right? Let's see, two, two, yeah. So ID is two, two. Okay, actual, it's giving the first one. So I think it's not working. Oh, it's two here. Now it's fine. Now all passing, right? Nice. So zero, one, two. So you specify when this mock is gonna take place. Perfect. Now we have to do the same thing that we've done in the other test. Nice. I'm gonna copy these just to save time. Okay, we can do the count count here. So assert strict equal. I'm gonna get this count count. Okay, just to get the count. And it's supposed to be three, right? So let's save it. I'm gonna just copy this. Nice, all working. And we're gonna get the arguments, right? So from the first calls, on the first one, it's going to be skip and limit one, which is okay. The second call, it's going to be one, one. And the third call is going to be two, one. So I'm going to remove all of this and let's save it. Ooh, everything is passing as expected. Okay. All right. As I told you, I'm gonna just copy the name just to say it's our uh, faker timers test here and I'm gonna show you the pull request I'm working on here you can see all the how it's gonna be how it's gonna work it's a bit different than just I'm using tick there they're using advancing time but you can follow all the discussion and review and everything that's going go there so it's not on Node.js yet but soon you're gonna see it working on Node.js, okay? So, not yet. I'm not sure if, okay. Everything is working as expected. Now you got everything you need to start migration your applications or even to get to know how it's working behind the scenes. Ah, just notice the output here with the NPM test is a bit different, right? So you have more information here so you can use on your CI and so on. We are missing just one thing, right? Let's compare the speed between both approaches. So I'm going to get on Jest and I'm going to run NPM test. And let's check how it was. So it was uh, 300 milliseconds, right? Let's see on Node. Oh, it's what it was half of the time. But you would say, oh, but here we are using on the jazz side, we are using faking fake timers, right? So I'm gonna just rename it. And let's see. So now it was a bit less, but not even close to Node.js, right? So the Node.js test runner is a lot faster. But it's faster because it was optimized to work on Node.js. Just has to work on browsers and a lot of other different environments. All right? So yeah, Node.js is way faster than Jazz, and you can check it out on big suites. It's gonna be nice. The Node.js native test runner is on fire and you can start using it right away. I always prefer using something that is in the Node.js core as I wouldn't need to install and keep up to date with any additional libraries. Let me know what you thought about this class and what ideas you had about it. That's it for today. If you want to see more content like this, keep an eye on the playlist on this channel as there is new content in Portuguese and English every week. And of course, subscribe to the channel. I hope this content has exceeded your expectations. 
I'm Eric Wendell and I'll see you in the next video. Jazz has become big in JavaScript ecosystem. Jazz has become big in the JavaScript ecosystem. Jazz has become big in the JavaScript ecosystem uh, of the standard engineer. And I've been working on improving the mo. In summary, the fake timers features helps us helps us helps us to trigger tri to trigger trigger. Well, I'll be using Node.js in the version tw uh, twenty. Vou fazer essa parte de novo.